morning, boomers. The voice of the blockchain, Satoshi's big cousin, cryptography's finest, Champagne Crypto. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum stocks. They're on hold, seems like they're trading sideways as crude oil and bonds are under pressure. Crude is getting smashed out there. Is it a time to buy the dips? We'll be talking about it. Dolphin, Adam, Crypto Slim, Sorian, Lady Plants, the rest of the crypto maniac savages are deep here in the foxholes of the blockchain battlefield trenches today we're talking about that bit that eth that stock those crude oils those bonds as we continue to snipe out whatever moves out here shout out to my long gunners indeed we're at the precipice of an opportunity i'm going to keep repeating repeating this i need your combat hats on we're on the precipice of an opportunity i don't need you guys fudding out on me I need you guys focus out there. Shout out to James, Crypto Slim, Adam, 134, Sorry, and Lady Plants. Guys, smash all the buttons, like, subscribe, post notification, ding, ding, ding. I need you tuned in every single day out here as we stay focused on all those opportunities. Boom, boom. Indeed. Let me turn off these uh, dollar bills, these coins. We're going to be checking out the markets out here. I'm multi-streaming with Restream.io to DLive and YouTube. Make sure you're catching me on DLive.tv slash Champagne Crypto. All the foxhole gunners, like Adam says, indeed, uh, we're out here, guys. Whether things are up or down, we're looking for opportunities. We're staying positive. And uh, while people are out there fudding out, freaking out all the time, see people driving alone with masks on. What's going on? People are driving alone with masks on. Uh, talk about NPCs. I don't know what else to say, guys. While those people are driving alone with their masks on, I'm focused here in the trenches, ready for the opportunities, guys. We're separating the men from the mice, the pits from the poodles, the feast from the famine, the victors from the victim. Which side are you on? Let's check out today's mathematics over there. Uh, let's start off with uh, BTC. You got BTC on Coinbase, 70.53. A little dippage, a little dippage, holding the line. And you know the deal, guys. The story is the same story as it has been for the past uh, at least 2020. And that is, if the stock market goes up, so can Bitcoin. If the stock market goes sideways, Bitcoin can go up too, but usually it stays sideways as well. Today, we got our eyes focused on crude oil and the bonds they're getting slammed out there is this a sign will the s p will the economy follow in that way uh in the short term usually that's what's kind of happening are we going to see a little dip dive in a slide here with the stocks bonds if the fed does not pull out the big guns again you know the fed is basically patching the holes in a sinking ship every single day they're throwing out what seems to be like trillions of dollars and today those bonds those crudes are dipping but you got uh you know the stocks trading sideways will it follow in the wake of the bonds and the crude i don't know usually it has but you know we're in an uncertain time in a managed economy and anything can happen that's why we need some dry powder we need one in the chamber if any pres opportunities present themselves we're ready to fire boom Let's check out the coin market caps and then we'll take a look at the legacy markets. Let it rain with USD anyway. USA can do that. They just print lots of USD, says uh, Sorian. Yeah, they're making it rain out there. And that's the truth. And, uh, you know, we know that that's funny bunny. But right now, USD is stronger. And these uncertain time, you know, it seems like it's viewed as less funny bunny by other currencies right now usd is stronger i don't know what else to say i mean i don't like that but it's the fact jack shout out to my foxhole gunners bitcoin at 7069 up 0.78 are we are we at the right let me let me make sure i hit refresh i don't think that was right let me hit refresh here okay boom that's that's better uh bitcoin at 7068 down 1.69 percent uh ether 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 i said this this morning i think ether was the strong play of the month at least Definitely last week is the best play I made getting into more ETH. Shout out to everybody that's trying to join the 32 ETH club. Rumor is that it's going to require 32 ETH to stake ETH. If and when Ethereum upgrades to proof of stake, you could become a validator. So says the rumor with 32 ETH and you can earn rewards. So says the rumor. It hasn't been confirmed, but we're buying the rumor and maybe selling the news out there. Trade what you have in front of you. 
Shout out to Cryptozilla with the dancing monkey and shades. Boom! eToro. Shout out to them. They're shooting me ads on the Brave browser. If you're a cryptomaniac boomer and you're tuning in every single day and you haven't downloaded the Brave browser, I really don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, you need to start earning bats yesterday or the week before. Do it now. Download the Brave browser and start earning those bat tokens. Ether at 180, looking like a deal and a steal under 200. We discussed this earlier last week i believe ether and we've said this a few times all time high with ether is fourteen hundred dollars guys ether's looking sexy although there were compromised this weekend with apparently some sort of a hack i don't know what exactly happened but i'm not scared and i'm not sweating there's ups there's downs there's peaks and there's valley and a two, under 200 dollar eth bag is smelling sweet to the champion right now you got ripple at 19 cents you got bitcoin cash there at 230 you got satoshi vision in the garbage can litecoin at 42 dollars binance at number eight now at 15 bucks eos slightly in the green at 266 i got baggage of eos that i'm considering swapping out into ethereum Shout out to the 32 ETH club. That's all I got to say. T Tezos at 224. Chainlink in the green as well. This is another one that's, you know, I considered maybe even stacking some of these. But uh, I, I'm taking ETH first. I can't, you know, maybe even Link has some more gas behind it. I, you know, I just feel like ETH may be more undervalued at this moment as far as where the all-time highs have gone in the past. Leo at 104. Stellar at 5 cents. How about more in Monero, guys? The only true one in the block. Cardano at three cents and then uh, Tron at one cent. Shout out to CryptoZilla, our sniper out of Japan. How's things going out there in Japan? I heard they finally locked it down. Is it, is it true? Is it not? What's going on out there and with our bros in Japan? Shout out to everybody tuning in via DLive. Uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you have both platforms, you're better off tuning in with DLive so you can get some of these lemons and support something that's not YouTube. Cryptozilla just do donated 10 lemons. Let me drop a bomb. Oh, it's an ice cream. One ice cream is 10 lemons. So there you go. Guys, follow me out there. I appreciate it there, uh, Cryptozilla. Lockdown will not happen unless they change the constitution. So no. Okay, so it's not completely locked down. Awesome. Awesome. There's already some uh, protests going on out here, uh, you know, in, in the in the U.S. There, people have had it out there in Minnesota. They pulled up on the state capitol, and uh, you know, people have had it. You know, people have had it. You know, enough, enough with this. Let's let's get back to work and listen and be considerate of other people. You know, and if you're completely scared and freaked out, then stay home. Real simple. You know, while we do go outside, let's be considerate. Let's be clean. Maybe you know, this is something good out of this is that people are a little more clean. I'm I'm all for cleanliness. Cleanliness is close to godliness. Close to. It, is, it isn't, though. Uh, shout out to those Cryptozilla, Saurian, George, Adam Rose, and everybody kabooming out there. Bitcoin looking like it's possibly rebounding there at 70.59. Let's look at the uh, the five-day chart here. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, come on. Looking good. Sideways, sideways, sideways. Basically ra waiting on the movements of the legacy markets. Let's check that out. Uh, Japanese protest by going to work with mask on, but some businesses like nightclubs are banned. Okay, yeah, okay, I can see that. You know, you, you're not you're not going to have everything going at 100% capacity, uh, but you know, it seems like uh, that's where the U.S. I mean, everywhere it, the U.S. Is, is not a complete lockdown. It's a it's a guideline. And some places are stricter than others, but uh, it seems like we're we're headed in the direction to phase one. Two, three, and one, two, and three, eventually opening up the gyms, the theaters, and uh, we can move forward out here. Uh, but you know, again, let's do it prudently and let's do it safe, and let's make sure that you know everybody's being respectful. But if you want to change things, then you'll find a number of restaurants open. Well, I'll hear that all the restaurants are open as far as uh, takeout, but there, you know, there's no sit down yet. 
but they're talking about maybe uh, letting in 50% capacity, uh, putting the tables extra far from each other, etc. Let's look at these indices though. Uh, S&P is in the slightly in the red, but it's basically you know sideways. And basically, that's exactly look, guys. I mean, I don't know how many times I can tell you. Look, S&P is down 0.87 today. And uh, Bitcoin is down 0.1. I mean, like, it's it, they're so close together that I don't know what else to say. Uh, Dow is down point, uh, 1.25. So, you know, so B- Bitcoin is in between the S&P and the Dow as far as uh, how down it is. Uh, not that much. Crude oil is getting slammed. You can see the futures for crude, crude oil are now at $10. And uh, the actual crude oil is trading at, let, let's see, it's last time I checked was like it was at 10 bucks as well. This is never before seen. I mean, it's at $11. So the futures are pointing towards a further decline. And listen, I'm still bullish on oil. I'm going to be honest with you as far as the midterm. So, you know, this is kind of, I'm I'm questioning whether just to start hodling, start accumulating here, because look, you're talking about $11 here. This is a deal. I mean, where's it going to go to $5? I mean, come on. Uh, so, you know, at this, I mean, unless you think it's all done for with oil, which I completely a hundred percent doubt it. Oil is not only just gasoline and fuel, but you're talking about plastics and other products as well. So, I mean, I don't know. You tell me guys, it, it seems to me like oil may be one of the most undervalued, uh, out there. Uh, Tyler says $2 in oil. I don't know. Two bucks in oil. I mean, you know, I've never, I don't think we've ever seen that before. I mean, we certainly haven't seen these prices. Right now, it's uh, about 10 bucks. It's a deal in a steal. The other day, I uh, was it yesterday? I filled up the tank at $1.80. I mean, this thing is going to go to a dollar any second now. Uh, Tyler D's a joke. Yeah, I mean, it's it, look at how cheap it is. Uh, but, you know, I, I can only expect this thing to go. I mean, how cheap is it going to go? How low could it go? What's the real price out here? I know that they're, uh, you know, there's a, there's a war going on and, uh, you know, $2 oil is the new sub 1K VTC. I mean, look, oil is getting... It's looking a lot worse than BTC. That's why I'm asking. I'm saying, is it the time to start DCAing into oil? Even though it may drip a little bit lower, you know, maybe it goes under 10, but you know, eventually it'll go back to 20 or 30. I mean, sub 30 is still looking ugly for oil. I mean, just a few weeks ago. So I don't know. I'm asking these questions again. I'm not anybody's uh, crude oil dad, stock market father, Bitcoin daddy, uh, just sharing my opinions. Let me know what yours are. I posted the seven reasons ETH 2.0 will create the next economic shift says Cryptozilla. Excellent. Do you have a YouTube channel or you're doing that on Twitter or where? Let, let us know so I can, I can shout you out, uh, Zilla. Let's look at the bonds out here at 0.62 down another 3%. Listen, if they don't get a handle on bonds and crude oil, I look, I, I would expect the short term for the stocks to look a little bloody. Okay. If they don't get a handle on it uh, by this week, we may take another dip. You know, you, it's usually, you know, the, the markets follow in the wake of bonds and oil. So, I mean, are we going to take another dip dive in a slide now like crude and bonds uh, did today? So, uh, you know, that's that's the question gold is holding strong silver uh is is there as well i'm a lot more bullish on gold than silver although silver seems like it's more undervalued but also it seems like it's more manipulated more manipulated and uh it seems like there's a higher demand for gold just period so you know i like them both i just like gold better uh stocks active are ge amd uh, American Airlines, Bank of America, okay? And we'll go over the watch list and see if they remain strong. Last week, we shared our watch list. Uh, that watch list includes ETFs, altcoins, stocks. I mean, we're all over the place, okay? We're looking for opportunities, and we're not discriminating right now. You can see the cryptos in red. decreasing bitcoin dominance rate creates altcoin possibility this is being reported on being crypto uh you know i don't know how much the btc dominance has dropped but i'll tell you this okay well it says here bitcoin dominance rate has been decreasing for 229 days if it decreases below 62 and a half it could trigger a rapid downward move the litecoin price is trading near an all-time low i'm glad i got out of this of that litecoin okay 
Um, Bitcoin dominance race has been decreasing for 229 days. Th- initially, this caused many altcoins to surge, leading several speculators to call for the beginning of alt season. However, the altcoin increases have ceased since February and never really reached the heights of the alt season in 2017. Look, I'm telling you guys, I don't know how many times I'm going to repeat this. I think that while everybody's freaking about out about Corona, uh, focusing on the stocks, uh, waiting for the Bitcoin happening in the background, in between time. And in the meantime, the altcoins are bubbling, specifically Ethereum. In my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's my opinion. Okay, so, you know, let me know what yours is. Cryptozilla says, my voice is hoarse by this hour with the kids trapped in the cage with me. So do you have a channel? Oh, he says, no, I posted the link on DLive. Okay, let's check this out. Let's check this out on DLive. What is a... I don't see anything on DLive, Cryptozilla. Just uh, share it here. If you want to share it, share it in the, in the chat box. I don't see any links on DLive. Head over to DLive, guys. Blockchain backers calling for B2C dominance to go to 15. And, you know, I don't I don't know about that. You know, let's see. When I hear crazy things like that, you know, we, you know it's like hearing $100,000 Bitcoin, a million dollar Bitcoin. It sounds cool, bro. But, you know, we got to, you know, we got to see, you know, a 50% dominance, a 40% dominance before we even get to those numbers. Cryptozilla just shared a link. Let me see here. Seven reasons ETH will create the next economic shift. Let me see if I have that up. Could you guys see the article? Seven reasons. So like uh, this is according to Adam Cochran over there on medium.com. Okay. And I'll, I'll go over this briefly. Not that I agree or disagree because I haven't even read this. So let's check this out. I think I've actually came across this article somewhere. Uh, this article was originally a very long tweet storm located here by Adam Cochran. ETH 2.0 is only a few months away and could prove to be the largest economic shift in society. Here are the seven economic cases for how ETH will perform with ETH 2.0 rollout. Rent seekers, large investors, high stable returns around 3 to 5%. Yeah, I mean, people that are basically hodling and they're looking to earn something with their bag. Uh, secondary rounds. Price spike from supply shock means rent seekers are getting 3 to 5% ROI in Ether and actually getting much higher returns on their fiat principal. Okay, uh, possibly to two to four X. And so they go in for a second round of buy and stake until their fiat on book ROI is back to three per three to five percent ROI rate. Uh, retail FOMO that will kick in. I'm, I, I think eventually we'll see a retail FOMO fear of missing out once the big dogs are in there and the st- price starts moving. We saw that happen with Bitcoin when it ran up. actual demand the best reason for this gross growth and one of the only if uh, 2.0 can really claim is actual demand for the asset and use for gas in the decentralized computer remember in order to use that decentralized computer that is ethereum you need to pay the fees in ether the gas so i mean that you know for people that are trying to run decentralized applications they need to have gas uh, in the form of ethereum in order to run uh, in order to, to run their smart contracts and uh, be able to uh, basically pay for the com- on blockchain computing power. Let me click on this ad here. No kid hungry. Let me get the bats. Boom. Whale cycle buying. overreaching rounding i'm just going to show you guys so i mean it's a long article i don't, don't want to read it its entirety and then fee burning burning for flat supply with ethereum improvement proposal 1559 is a way to change the fees on ethereum blockchain take place first it means more efficient payments and no minor cabals voting on fees but most importantly for us it means that we can expect there to be a burning uh, with estimates starting as low as this is so this is still an improvement proposal where they would burn ethereum um, and some of the transaction fees I'm assuming that's cool I always like that you know burning some of the uh, 
the tokens. And then they talk about ETH locked in DeFi and whatnot. This is a long and lengthy article, but I seem to agree on most of it. Although some of the reasons to me are about the same. So, uh, you know, I think some of the reasons could be put in the same category. But, uh, you know, I'm bullish on ETH. I'm bullish. In 2017, it went down to 38%. So the lows around 30% has a precedent, uh, says Rafterman. Welcome, Rafterman. Welcome back. Derek says, Overstock T0 is going to be huge. Kaboom. Uh, all right. Cryptozilla says, and unlike before, there are many already KYC ready. Right, right. It, within the Ethereum blockchain and that ecosystem is what you're saying, Cryptozilla? I'm, I'm asking. But yeah, that's a good article. And I, and I think I did come across that article. I don't know if it was on Reddit or on my time, you know, offline. But yeah, it's a lengthy article. And uh, we were back here. Uh, did I share this article? Decreasing Bitcoin dominance, all season possibilities. Listen, I, I agree with this. L- listen, once the uh, the Rona hype dies down, okay, and uh, you know the Bitcoin having hype do- dies down, people are going to be paying attention to other coins, okay? ETH is at the top of the list, and I'm sure there's other ones. There's Chainlink, and there's other ones. We have a we have a portfolio with nothing but altcoins. If you guys are interested, which ones we like? But yeah, I mean, you know, look out for that. And because of that. I'm looking uh, to diversify the Bitcoin that I've been hodling into either USD or some altcoins while the price of Bitcoin may be up before the happening. It may sell and then I may be buying back in. And I explained this strategy uh, a little bit further in detail uh, this morning on the video that I released. And look at Litecoin. I'm... Come on with Litecoin. I'm so glad I'm out of Litecoin. That's the dumbest hodl I've ever done. I'm going to be honest with you. Dumbest hodl ever. You got to be able to call out your dumb moves, guys. On exchanges and platforms like Coinbase. What are you talking about here? Uh, Unlike before, there are many KYC. Yeah, right, 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 right. Like uh, exactly the, the platforms. People are ready to go. Before many wanted in, but they were waiting to get KYC. Exactly, exactly. So most people are already, you know, have a Coinbase account. And if they, you know, they get some of that retail FOMO, they could easily just go back in and, and start buying without having to clear their bank account, yada, yada. Exactly. Uh, Rafterman's talking about uh, Bitcoin dominance. In 2017, it went down 38%. So the lows around 30 has a little precedent. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be. Uh, but, you know, as far as like a 10 or $15 I mean, excuse me, a 10 or 15% Bitcoin dominance as someone else called for. Uh, we we got to get to, you know, 30%, 40% before that, you know. And um, at that point, when you're talking about 38% dominance, 30% dominance, it almost lost its dominance to Ethereum. Ethereum was the one that really tested Bitcoin's dominance. And I think it will again. And listen, uh, you know, it's okay if Bitcoin loses some dominance, guys. I mean, how, how long has it been around? Do you expect other coins to gain it doesn't mean that bitcoin is a loser or it's gonna die or anything like that but you know it's it's becoming an older whale and and it becomes more of a blue chip it is the blue chip coin as far as crypto but um you know look for other ones to gain look for other ones to gain and because of that i may take some uh profits with btc hold some usd maybe back buy back into btc uh or get some altcoins but let me be clear uh you know uh, the majority of the btc is staying in btc Adam says, what happened to Litecoin? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. It seems to me like ever since Charlie Lee dumped the bags when altcoin, I mean, when Litecoin was at an all-time high, when Litecoin was an all-time high, Charlie Lee dumped the bags back when it was like 300 and change. It seems like, you know, it never recovered. And it went all the way down to 20 and it, you know, went up to back to 140, 150 pre-having last year. But, um, as far as like peer-to-peer electronic cash, Bitcoin Cash seems to be gaining dominance on that area of demand. And um, as far as it competing is with the fees, Bitcoin fees are already low now that they did, you know, whatever, the SegWit or the Lightning Network. So what's the reason to hold Litecoin? I don't know. They promised there was a rumor there for a little bit with the Mimble Wimbles, but nothing ever came to fruition. Let's look at the uh, legacy market, uh, the Wall Street Journal here. Um, Mnuchin, Democrats say they're close on a small business deal. They're gonna be, there's going to be another stimulus package. And this is also bullish for the markets. 
You usually see that as soon as they announce another stimulus, the markets, they fire up again. And uh, you guys should you know, be happy about that because it usually positively impacts the price of Bitcoin. Uh, but at the same time, you see bets against stock market hit highest level in years. And that's why I'm not entirely concerned. I'm, you know, even though it's, you know, bets against the market are the highest level in years. Usually things don't follow the mainstream guys. So, you know, if everybody thinks it's going to fail, maybe it's not. You got governments facing pressure to ease, lo- ease lockdowns. We just explained this at the beginning of the uh, broadcast. There's already protests going on and people want to... It seems like I, I was discussing this offline and, you know, I, I, my condolences to anybody that's been impacted by corona or anybody that's sick. Or, you know, no, one life lost is one too many, okay? Uh, but it is my opinion that the reaction has been... the 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 government reaction has been uh, exaggerated. It is my opinion. Uh, And I feel like the lockdown impacted and harmed people more than the virus did. Uh, Let's be honest. Most of us know several people that have lost their job and has been impacted. Uh, I don't know if most people know someone that's been, uh, you know, that has the Rona or that has been, you know, has passed away. Although some have. Okay, let me be honest with you. Some have came in and they say they know. So I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying it seems to me that the majority of people are more impact economically than, by the lockdown than they are by the virus. That's, that's what I'm trying to express here. Uh, but in no way do I, am I trying to downplay anybody that's been actually hurt physically uh, by this. Because that sucks. Uh, Adam says, uh, no doubt about it, Champagne, they are using the virus as an excuse for their failing system. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. It seems like, uh, you know, they, they're, they're they're trying to seize, what is it they they uh, they said before, was it, uh, was it Cheney or somebody in the Bush administration? I forgot. They said, never leave, a, let a good crisis go to waste. Or was it somebody in the Obama administration? Something like that. They're not letting, letting this crisis go to waste. So whether... It was or wasn't manufactured. I don't think they're letting it go to waste and they seem to be implementing whatever plans they want to do, guys, and giving more money to the big guys. So listen, I mean, we can sit here and complain or not, or we can, you know, act accordingly uh, and uh, make the moves that we feel are going to benefit us. Right, 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 right. It's also the forced vaccine and biometrics ID card, uh, tinfoil hat. But it's really, is it really a tinfoil hat on or is it more like realistic uh, talk now, Tyler? I mean, I know before when you would say those things, people would be like, oh, you know, tinfoil hat. Uh, nowadays, it's been talking, it's been talked about in the mainstream. Was the mayor of Chicago who said it, says, uh, oh, yeah, all right, right. Was it Rahm Emanuel? Was it that guy? Or I don't know. Never let a good disaster go to waste, right? Tyler says, I think it's real. Yeah, I mean, you know. But listen, guys, um, instead of you know, fudding out and worrying about that. Let's, let's focus on the opportunities. Market watch over here says S and P 500 may slump below 2000 by summer, despite feds efforts predicts the economist. And you can see this kind of plays off this, uh, headline bets against stock markets hit highest level in years. Now I'll be honest, seeing the crude, uh, price of crude oil take such a hit and the price of the bonds go down so low, uh, right now, if they don't come up with another stimulus or do something, you know, we're headed downtown. Look, if, if the Fed didn't do anything, guys, the S&P would be well below 2000 and, and, this, and the Dow would be obviously below 20. OK, uh, but, you know, as long as they keep managing this market, they, you know, they maybe could keep a counterfeit market, in other words. So let's let's check it out. ID 2020, they've been planning to use an event to make sure everyone has an ID tracker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, these these ideas are nothing new. I mean, uh, Bill Cooper talked about them in Be- Behold a Pair of Horse back in the 90s. Shout out to Coop. You know the story with Coop. He predicted uh, that they would blame bin Laden for something like a 9-11. And then a few months after 9-11, he was killed by the authorities in a gunfight. Okay. Let's let us let us throw a little coop 
I think I do. I have a, a clip of Coop. Shout out to Coop. Shout out to Bill Cooper, the the Godfather of the the conspiracy stuff. He was the first one. If you haven't watched Behold the, if you haven't read Behold the Pale Horse, do so right now. Here's Bill Cooper on how the NWO is following Bibles. Book of Revelation, like an instruction manual. Here's a little clip for you boomers. Your message to people, once again, is don't believe anything. How right. is it that the public can find this and you know search for this truth on their own if they can't believe anything or anyone? What what can it's they all, do? It's all in the public sector. It's all available to anyone who actively and diligently uh, seeks it out. Um, everything that's, that's in my book, Behold a Pale Horse, is all, everything in here, all the documents that are in here, mm-hmm. everything that's in this book is in the public Can domain. Can be substantiated? Yes, and I intentionally wrote this book, not using anything that wasn't available to the public, to show people that yes, if I can find this information, so can you. I have tons of stuff that's not available to the public. But as you can see by reading this book, you don't need that stuff, because it's what you need is available to you. Uh, public libraries are, are, are overflowing with, with the proof of what's really going on in the world, but nobody really utilizes it to the extent that, they, that they're able to pick this out and put it together. Another thing I've done for people is I put it together for them so that they can see the overall picture rather than looking at small um, things and, and thinking that it's isolated. Nothing is isolated. It's all part of a big puzzle. Mm-hmm. And the puzzle is coming together. And when the puzzle is assembled, it's going to be a one-world totalitarian socialist government that nobody's going to like except the people that are running it. It's Hitler all over again. And the rationalization is, we're going to create the world without war. The utopia. The utopia. But they will never create that utopia because they're not dealing with the problem that makes them want to create it, and that is the inherent flaw in each individual human being that makes us do the things that we do. Until that's overcome, there's never going to be a world without war or without rape or without killing or without robbery, and anybody that thinks that there is has already gone off the deep end. So the method is, here, I'm going to hold a gun to your head so you won't rape, you won't kill. That's right. Very, yes, okay, I understand. The title of your book, Behold a Pale Horse, what significance does that have? What are you, what are you saying with this title? This title is, is from the book of Revelations, because I, I have to tell you this, and, and you may think I'm nuts if you want to, uh, but this is the truth. Either these men are following the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation is, is, it is in the in Bible, mm-hmm. they're either following it, just like a plan, and bringing the prophecies in there to pass to manipulate and control those who believe in those prophecies and neutralize them, so to speak. In other words, uh, if this is written in the Bible and God has ordained it, who am I to resist? It must come to pass, so I'm not going to I'm not going to try to stop it. Okay. What a perfect way to neutralize the opposition right off the bat. Or, there really is a God, and what he said was going to come to pass is coming to pass. And I named this, Behold a Pale Horse, from um, chapter 13 of the book of Revelations. The fourth horse, the fourth horseman of the apocalypse is the pale horse. And I looked, and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat upon him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with the beasts of the earth. And that is taking place now today. The fourth horseman is riding across the world now. That's what AIDS is all about. That's what all these little brush fire wars all over the world. I mean, we're going to keep playing some, but uh, Derek says this is uh, videos hell of interesting. This is in the 90s. And, uh, you know, when he was dropping this on people in the 90s, they thought he was straight up wacko. But nowadays, this is like a fastball. So, you know, shout out to Coop. And this guy, you know, he he put his, you know, he, he ended up going out in a blaze of, uh, in a gun blaze. And, and I don't, you know, support that or not. But uh, it makes you think of whether he's authentic or not. You know, that's all I got to say, you know. Let's keep playing. What the world all about. That's what's happening. That's why cancer cures are suppressed. It's because they fully intend to kill a minimum of 2 billion people by the year. When I get down and, and almost get to a point of hopelessness, I just go read the Sermon on the Mount. And I come back up again. Because in the end, it's not going to matter whether Jesus ever lived or didn't live. The story is real. And it's within all of us. And uh, it, it brings us to something within ourselves that is good. Yeah, he went out in a gun blaze. Not we. He did. Uh, he went out... Uh, and a gun blaze against the authorities. They went to get him uh, for, you know, you could, uh, you know, I, follow his story because it's, it's wild. And uh, he predicted 9-11. And he said, guys, what, like a few months out before, he said, they're going to blame it all on bin Laden. 
Uh, he said it. This guy has been following. He's ex-military, so he's not like somebody that just came out of nowhere. He's ex-military. And uh, he starts the book talking about how he first saw a UFO coming out of the water when he was in the military and uh, how he got into UFOs or whatnot. But then as he got into the UFO thing, he started learning that the whole UFO thing was a uh, just a disinformation campaign and that the UFOs were really from the government. There wasn't no aliens or anything. They were trying to get people to believe that there was aliens because there's something called Project Red Light. Uh, where apparently they were going to back engineer some of those extraterrestrial uh, technologies, but that was all a disinformation campaign, according to Coop. So no, this guy goes deep. Shout out to Coop. And he called out Jones and said Jones was a fraud. So, you know, uh, let's keep playing a little bit and then I'll check out uh, whatever. uh, Zilla just shared a link there on YouTube, the Eight hour musician tribute to global citizen. And he's pointing out to some, some symbolisms. I haven't seen it yet, but you guys may not want to check that out. But these men don't look at that. They believe that the end justifies the means, that these stories are just stories, and that the real meaning behind it all is that man can transcend his animal state through the realization of intellect right. and the overcoming of all of his emotions and feelings and uh, morals, guilt, all of these things. And I just can't go along with that because I believe it's our emotions that tell us when we're doing wrong. We feel it within ourselves. And a person without that capacity to feel when they're doing wrong becomes a sociopath, which is someone without a conscience, who really believes that the end justifies the means, and therefore has no pangs of conscience, nor no reluctance to murder someone who gets in their way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's extremely dangerous. Now, do these people uh, um, recognize the continuity of life? In other words, you have told me earlier that uh, they're after physical immortality. They believe that through their technology, man will become God. With the power of reason, through technology, man will himself become God. They will engineer, just like Hitler wanted to do, the super race who will live forever. And the concept is the same, and the men behind it are the same as Hitler was. When they killed John F. Kennedy, it, it shows you what kind of men they are. Because they would not stop to kill anyone who gets in their way. And they've never stopped at it. Yeah, catch the rest of the... I'm not going to play the whole video, but he keeps going. And, and research this guy's life if you really want to get into it. This is like the anchor of, of the conspiracy community, in my opinion. Let's see what CryptoZilla is sharing here. Right, the logo here in the front. Yeah, just t- together at home. And they're using the, the celebrities to to push the, the social ne- engineering uh, agenda as they have since the very, very beginning. You know, as, as the very from the very beginning, they've been using Hollywood uh, and, and celebrity to push their agenda. And, I, and I've talked about how even in the 60s, the hippie movement is tied to the military industrial complex, uh, you know, I've shared a whole video on that. Yeah, how is it for that logo? All seeing eye. Yeah, it's it's it, it's right there in your face. They got to show it to you in your face, uh, Cryptozilla. You're right. Uh, and, you know, I'm not surprised, but some people, you know, they don't know this. Uh, and there's actually a good... Uh, did I already share, uh, share it? Out of the Shadows, that new documentary that came out. Uh, it's a Hollywood stuntman. Thank you, uh, Rafterman, by the way, for that $2 USD. Let me drop a bomb for you. Dollar bills coming out. He says you're cutting edge, champ. Thank you so much, Rafter man. I appreciate you. Let me go back to this uh, to this uh, j- chart. Uh, Two dollars USD by Rafter man. Guys, follow Rafter man's lead. Drop a couple ducats in the bucket if you are getting some value from the stream. Welcome back to Jose. I see you out there, Jose. Uh, so yeah, back to the topic at, at hand. Uh, you know, uh, I was just talking about that out of the showers, showers, shadows. Uh, documentary out of the shadows it's a former uh, Hollywood stuntman uh, that he starts waking up to to the deceptions of Hollywood and the different satanic rituals that you know and all the symbology and he starts uncovering all kinds of pedophilia and all kinds of weirdo stuff that's linked to Hollywood so you guys may want to uh, check out that uh, documentary out of the shadows it's brand new Happy Monday to main event. They show you how they they have to show you both sides of the coin to perform a trick people will believe believe in. Right, right, right. I think it's part of uh, 
some sort of a contractual agreement. I don't know. They got to show it to you in, in the fine print. Bit Papa says Ted Gunderson. That, that name sounds familiar. Ted Gunderson. We'll look that one up too. But yeah, there's all kinds of rabbit holes. But you know, you once you, you understand like that there's evil and there's good and that the evil really does exist, then you under that it really clicks a lot easier. And you'd be like, oh, okay, you know, there's good and there's evil. It's not just uh, you know, the, the Illuminati club. You know, it, it get, there's there's tiers that's even higher than that, you know. And um then it's it becomes easier to figure out and uh You can navigate accordingly. Ex FBI from LA says a uh, bit pop up. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna definitely uh, bookmark that. Let's continue to look at these uh, headlines over here. U.S. crude oil futures tumble towards biggest one day drop in history. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know. I mean, like, are you guys following me here? Is it the time to start DCAing into oil, like? I mean, with the biggest drop in history, there's got to be a deal here. I mean, what are you thinking? Crude oil is going to be done with forever? I don't know. This seems like, I don't know. This, this seems like an obvious buy. Uh, I'm asking the question because, you know, I have no experience, in, uh, experience buying into crude oil. So let me know what you think about this. May futures contract for U.S. crude extended losses Monday, touching their lowest level since the late 90s as fears about a shock to demand due to the virus pandemic and worries about a lack of storage look to set look set to hammer the commodity to start next week. Uh, just bought some oil ETFs with a sprinkle of cash. As Tyler D. Right? I mean, like, you know, at these prices, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. It seems like it's a time to take a take a stab at it. I don't know. Uh, Big Papa says, "Can I post a YouTube link?" Yeah, try it out. It, it should uh, it should be all right. Uh, I rather store actual gasoline. Says main event, but you can't. Gasoline uh, expires very quickly. I don't know what the shelf life on gasoline is, but it's it's not long at all. Adam uh, says, "I think they are transitioning away from the petrol dollar regime." Uh, well. It seems like, yeah, some countries want to put pressure on it, but either that or, you know, th- it's done on purpose for them to instill another currency like a digital dollar, uh, or it could be part of, you know, the trade wars going on, or you know, there's a lot of things into play right here. They don't need oil to be high price anymore. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know, right? I-, I think oil is the lifeblood of the military industrial complex as it is right now. OK, uh, I, I don't see any alternatives to oil like right now. You know, you could talk about solar and biodiesel and stuff like that. But, you know, most things don't run on that. OK, you know, that could be in, in a few years. I'm talking about today. In my opinion, they are moving over to digital oil. And unfortunately, I think they're going to choose Ripple. Uh, come on, Adam. I mean, you're talking about crude oil. Now you're talking about Ripple. Like you're making a jump that's. Now I'm not paying attention to what you got to say. That's that's way of a leap. It's a, you know, no. That's, <laughs> uh, okay, no. That's a way of a leap. Chill. Now, you, you uh, Oil just signed a partnership with Ripple, says oh, Jose. So sh- share the link. Share the link. I'll, I'll pay attention. Share the link. Let's see what, what, uh, what, what they have to say. Come on, Adam, the, is, is the new meme. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like that to me. It's like, oh, the oil, we, they don't need it anymore because they're going to use Ripple. Like, come on, come on, chill. Yeah, Ripple's not even used by the customers, but even by the banks. I, I don't like, like you're talking about something as powerful as crude oil. Don't bring in crypto into play all of a sudden. Like that's you know what that is? It's just like romantic thinking. No. Yeah, OPEX is a cartel, and they would instill still their own stuff. I, I don't know. Send me the uh, the link to Ripple. If not, you're just uh, the the Ripple link of them uh, as far as them associated with the 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 oil. If not, you're just you're daydreaming. You're 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 fantasizing. Send me some some evidence. If not, I'm not paying attention. It's that it, oh, they're just your thoughts. Okay, so you're just fantasizing. So your thoughts are based on a fantasy. Send me something like tangible. 
You have to. You got to send me st- something tangible. Send me like, you know, something outside of your thoughts. Like what led you to believe that? Just other than you were holding Ripple and you think that it, it could do something. Send, send me something tangible. Remember, you got to trade what you have in front of you, not what you hope for. Yeah, Big Papa says, pair character holding his belly, laughing out loud. I got to call you out, Adam. Like, you know, sh- share me, give me something that I can hold on to when, when it comes to that thought process. You know, that's what we got to do. We got to check each other out here. If you have some evidence that, that, that you know, some supporting evidence, I'll check it out. But if you're just like, oh, think about it. It, sh- it should work. It's like telling me that Bitcoin is going to be the alternative to the U.S. dollar. It sounds cute. But come on, guys. I don't want to think about it. Send me a link to something that's tangible that I can actually like verify. I'm not going to go down that thought process. It's a waste of time. I want to like send me something that I can that can trigger the thought process. Why are they letting oil drop like this? Um, there's a lot of things in play and crypto is not at the top of the list there is no demand right there is no demand for now and there is a trade war going on too there's a lot of people that want the u.s to to fail so they're trying to put pressure on the u.s too like you got you got uh, uh, other countries that are like trying to undercut and sell and, and basically tank the price yeah, oil has nothing to do with Ripple. That's just like, at this point, show me something that has to do with Ripple and oil, like like an actual, like, you know, oh, an article of someone that, like, you know, someone at OPEC looking at Ripple, or maybe they, they one of the, the, you know, guys in the board talk to this guy. Just show me something other than, oh, this is my, my, my critical thinking. I can use the same critical thinking and say that Bitcoin could be the global reserve currency. Okay. Okay. Then you, you can, it's just tall. It's just, you're fantasizing, bro. You're fantasizing. That's what I'm trying to call people out. I used to fantasize about Bitcoin too. Uh, just a year ago, uh, check out my videos. I'm saying, look, Bitcoin's the new global reserve. It's the antithesis to the bank. I thought so too, but it didn't come to fruition. You know, it, you know, it's just, where's the, the, the tough evidence, the hard evidence out here. Um, so, you know, and I'm listening to you, Adam. If not, I wouldn't go back and forth. It's all good. You know, you're, you're entitled to your own opinions. And so am I. Jose says, I'm confused, champ. Do you like Ripple or hate it? I don't care about Ripple right now. I don't. I think it's a fake blockchain, but it doesn't matter anymore because uh, Bitcoin's a surveillance coin. It's not really crypto anyway. You know, we've already identified that. <laughs> Big Papa says, I used to fact too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you be, you gain superpowers that once you stop fapping, right? Jose s- uh, says, get that Monero. And listen, I think Monero is the truest crypto. That being said, I don't think it's going to boom like other, like other cryptos. You know, I think it's the truest crypto. I think it's truer than Bitcoin, but I don't think that it's going to move uh, more than Bitcoin. But listen, I, I, you know, I l- listen. All, all of a sudden now, I'm more, I, I'm, I, I'm more friendly to Ripple, just so that you know, maybe, maybe Adam could uh, make some gains with Ripple. I'm not against Ripple anymore. It's just another speculative coin, guys. I'm, my, my new one to pick on is Satoshi Vision. Get them silver coins, says Jose. Really though, like that's another one. It's like everybody silver, silver. I heard that meme for a long time. I think gold right now is more attractive than silver. And yes, uh, I, I know the argument that silver is undervalued by I don't know how many times next to, to gold. I've heard all the arguments. But, uh, hmm, you know, when the, when the shit hit the fan, um, gold was the one that maintained its value. Look, guys, we, everything was tested already when uh, the U.S. declared the national state of emergency back in March. I mean, it got it got a little serious there for a second, and we didn't know if the you know uh, you know they were saying millions were about to die. Remember, remember what people were saying, and you know people started sell, Bitcoin dropped to forty five. Uh, you know, gold held better than silver, and Jose says gold and silver. Yeah, I, I get it, but I I think gold is way ahead. And listen, that's not to say, guys, let's not act like the champ hasn't done video showing you silver coins. Guys, I got silver stacks as well. I've showed them before. 
JP owns all the silver. That's the thing. You're right, Big Papa. We've talked about that before. I mean, that's already been exposed. Uh, Big Papa's talking about palladium. I've seen it make some gains, but it also crashed harder than silver did, I think, once uh, March came. I'd rather have BSV than Ripple purely because it's performing better than Ripple price rise. Well, there you go. I'd rather not have either. Nothing has happened yet. Just sit tight, says Jose. Okay, let's see. I, I've, we've been hearing that, though, for years, like over 10 years. And hopefully you're right because I, I have some of those silver stacks. So, you know, hopefully you're right. Tesla needs palladium. Uh, why is that? Is there some sort of a, a utility for it? Main event says the TP shortage was probably a good inter indicator. <laughs> uh, Tyler D says a, a fake Satoshi performs better in the markets than the unis unicorn vision of the new Ripple standard. You're probably right. Uh, Marlon says Richard Hart is proving all the crypto white knights wrong with the hex. Yeah, but you know the majority of hex is all traded on on the on one platform. So you know I, I know that it's up, but I'll be clear because people have asked me about that. And, you know, I'll, I'll uh, you know, a big shout out to everybody that's made gains. I'm not mad at that. I've never been mad at people making gains. I'm just not interested in a coin that the only thing they're selling is making gains. That to me doesn't seem like it's, it's a long, it's going to, it doesn't have a long vision. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of casino esque, but Hey, if you're in early, you know, look at, I'm sure uh, Marlon already made his whatever, how many percent of 1600 but i'll pass on that shout out to cur currency 365 10 usd litecoin 420 sits at 42 dollars eth 1500 sits at 180 bitcoin five thousand bitcoin cash sits at was once five thousand sits at 230 dash at 1600 that now sits at 79 ouch is litecoin really that bad i'm, I'm out currency i'll be out I'm, I'm be honest thank you so much for the 10 though i'm out i'm out of uh, Litecoin, <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I put it all in the ETH. Currency always stopping by, throwing me ten bucks. Oh, appreciate that. Yeah, how about that? You know, um, Litecoin's all-time high was four twenty. ETH at fifteen hundred. No one believes in Palladium because of the cost, but Tesla and all others upcoming will join, says Big Papa. Uh, could you explain a little bit more as uh, as far as like what, why Tesla needs uh, Palladium? I have no, I've never even heard of that. Nintendo. <laughs> Shout out to Marlon. Uh, congratulations for those, uh, you know, for you getting in. I mean, I, I can't hate on anybody making those gains, but let's be honest. There's a, there's a little stink to it, you know, whether you made gains or not, it's, it smells a little stinky, but Hey, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Sometimes you got to go in the dark, stinky alleys to get the deals. Uh, Jose says, I mean, nothing has happened yet when it comes to the economy. This is nothing. Expect the market to hit all time highs over 30 K and higher and then eventually dump. Well, there you go. I, 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 you know, it, it all depends on what type of tools the, the Fed decides to pull out, guys. Rafterman still has bags at Litecoin. Hey, you know, more power to you, but I, I've kept you guys informed. I, I gave it a chance, but I think it was a dumb move to keep holding bags after Charlie Lee, you know. After Charlie Lee. dumped on us marlon says 1600 percent. i like uh, I, I like that stink there you go yeah that's why i'm not mad at you and i and I, I'm, I'm all good with it you know but again there's a little stink though <laughs> no one denied that uh bit papa says it's like one of the purest platinums but you still haven't answered my question <laughs> okay oh you did the batteries of the future needed for making batteries last longer i run further uh, and to last longer and run further it doesn't degrade as fast. So they need it for batteries. Okay. I got, I got to look that up. I, I, I don't know anything about that. 
<laughs> Jose says there are no tools, just print money into ob- ob- oblivion. Right, you know, I just made it, made it just, I want to make it sound fancy. They make it, that's what they call it, the tools. That's what they call it. Have you ever seen them talk about it? Well, we have tools. And that tool is just a money printer. You're right. Rafter Man says all the talking heads and authorities have no clue. We're in a new, never before seen territory, so it's all a guess. Absolutely. Hex was an airdrop too, so that's some free stank. Right, right. Uh, I know that. that they, uh, it's an airdrop to Bitcoin holders. Yeah, I know, I know. Tools using tools. <laughs> we the people are their tools literally and figuratively. Yeah, it's a shame. That's how they, they look at it. Alba says, I, w- I, th- I was thinking they need cobalt for batteries. I really don't know. When it comes to like batteries and stuff, I, I have no idea. I've never even heard of palladium being associated with batteries. I don't know. Like, so I, I can't even chime in on that. But I do know that uh, it, it's not the first time I, I see palladium talked about here. Just having fun cryptos are going to crash when the Dow plunges to uh, 6K to 8K. I'll be ready to buy it up cheap. Shalom and take care. Shout out to Currency. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for the the uh, gratuity i agree if the uh, stock markets take a dip we already saw guys i mean this is directly correlated to the stocks right now so uh you know if if they want to let it crash and burn uh if they want to pump it more it's all up to them whatever their main plan is i don't know how fast they want to roll out what they're going to roll out or not but uh you know they're in control i mean what else could we say i mean they're in control uh, to a certain extent we know who's in control it's the big man upstairs but you know what i'm talking about Anglo-American Platinum and Platinum Group Metals have launched a new venture, Lion Battery Tech, to accelerate the development of next-generation battery tech using platinum and palladium. Okay, yeah, thanks for letting me know. Marlon says, uh, FYI, I'm expecting Bitcoin to hit 8K levels and it will sell off nicely after happening, waiting for 4 and 3K levels to buy. That's basically what I said in today's more, uh, video in the morning. It's exactly, it's, it's like, and I got a target about eight, but everything above seven is already okay. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm looking to take some profits now during this happening, starting already. You know, maybe I'm already DCA uh, on the selling. And then I do expect an, a little sell off after happening and maybe a buy back in at four or three. I always keep a position in Bitcoin though, guys. I mean, you know, whether I sell some or not, I, you know, I'm not, I'm never, I, I, I can never say never, but for right now, I mean, there's always Bitcoins under the pillow, you know, the deal. I'm really going to start buying at 5K. There's a strong possibility that we may run up short of 8K, sell off to about maybe back to the 5, 6K range that we were in just a few weeks ago. That's a strong possibility. And then maybe another run up again, you know, in the fall or uh, closer to the new year. But, you know, I think that, you know, the price run up for the happening is we're in it right now. Once we're above 7,000, we saw, you know, 72, 73. Maybe we get lucky in the coming week. We could see 76, 77. Uh, Yeah. Got to keep your Bitcoin hodl bag just in case. Yeah, there's always a hodl bag. There's there's always a hodl bag. But uh, being that I've hodled many years now, I'm going to take some of that uh, and, and take some profits. I'm going to take some profits now. Um, you know, and maybe even just buy back in. I'm be honest with you. Maybe just take some profits, wait a month, and buy back in. I don't know. You know, but you know, regardless, there's always a hodl bag. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to be clear because, uh, you know. When I say oh, I'm selling the bits, then, you know, people are like, oh, the champ, he's selling his. That's not true, guys. You know, I'm taking some here. I'm taking that, you know, just to be clear. I'm pretty sure it's going to drop again to at least uh, 6,200, says Albus. Listen, I, I mean, I've said this before, too. If it wasn't for the Fed stepping in and intervening, okay. Uh, I, okay, you're talking about Bitcoin. Uh yeah, I, I, you know, that also, if it wasn't for the Fed intervening, everything would be going down. I'm pretty sure it's going to drop again. Yeah, it could go below 62. Those BTC I bought at 3K in 2019, I'm selling now. There you go. Exactly. That's basically what, uh, uh, similar to what my uh, idea is. You know, now that it's above 7K, uh, you know, closer to 7, you know, you could start already DCAing on the selling. Some of it, you know, that some of those BTCs that we we accumulated back uh, in 2019 or some of before 2019, you know, we got some at three or four, you know, we could start already taking some profits at seven. Now, now maybe not the whole bit, bit 
uh, depending on what people are hodling. Maybe you could do a tenth, you know, a fifth or a twentieth, a quarter, whatever. Uh, but, you know, that's the strategy. And maybe use some of those funds to DC back in after five. And that's uh, basically what I was saying this morning. Yeah, so we, we seem to agree, Marlon. That's why I like Marlin. Even though we don't always agree, we don't have always pick up the same altcoins and stuff. I mean, like the the big vision is basically there. We just, you know, we play other we play some other games here and there, you know? It's all right. And we will use the funds back. Yeah, we just read that. Guys, drop a comment here. Let me know what's shaking and bacon. Let's check out Coindesk's uh headlines here. Hit refresh. First mover, Bitcoin attracting more buyers, even with the market stuck in extreme fear. It's obvious because we're 21 days away from the happening. Okay, and I, and I would say that we're getting close to the high before the happening. Don't expect the high before the happening to be uh, five days before the happening. I don't. I, I'm not expecting that. I, I already. I think by like a week before the happening, people are going to start selling. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I, I'm I'm comparing this to Litecoin's movement. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we have that, you know, that FOMO even the last week. Some U.S. citizens look to be splashing their stimulus cash on crypto. Some, I would say that that's true. How much it would impact the markets, I really don't know. Nothing really exciting here on the crypto headlines. Let's run through um, our watch list here. Keep an eye. Bad is moving well. Uh, come on, bad is bad is here to stay. Bad has a good model, and look at them on Google Play. They got a lot of downloads. Got my Bitcoin. Got my ETH. Got my alt bags and my cash. That sounds good. But what I need is a damn pipe clean. <laughs> there you go. All right. Spy is down. Let me see here. I'm going to check out these technicals. I'll put one fourth of my stimulus in Bitcoin. That doesn't sound like a bad move. It depends on where you at, though. Some people can't afford it. Some people have been slammed out there and they, you know, they got to use the cash for other things. But it's never a bad idea to, you know, to hodl. Fiverr is moving today. It's up 13%. And uh, I put it in our... Uh, our uh, strong buy watch list last week. I did put a a bid on a call last week, but it never got filled. So I never was able to get the position. But here it is, uh, Fiverr. It's, I guess it's an all-time highs right now. Still reading buy. And uh, this uh, ProShares Trust Ultra Short Bloomberg Crude is still moving, even though crude is going down. So uh, this this has been something that I got my eyes on, and I don't understand how this uh, the, the like what I read is that this moves at negative two x oil. So is it moving up because oil is going down? Is it shorting oil? Is that what it is? Look at the one month looking strong. If someone can, because this thing keeps coming up on my radar, I don't know. Is this a sign? Anyhow. Let's continue looking at this watch list. I'm an essential employee, so still earning. There you go. Then that may not be a bad strategy for uh, putting a quarter into your stimulus. Where did my browser go? There it is. I lost my browser there for a second. Okay. Shopify is up as well. 6%. Technicals are still looking strong. Can you see my screen? No, you can't. Boom. All right. 
Shopify still looking strong. Uh, work, I got a call on this one last week, and I was down, but now this thing is back up. And, and I expect this thing to go up. Although, listen, you know, as soon as they announced that people were going to, you know, that they were going to start lifting the lockdown, uh, you know, Slack took a hit momentarily. But I do expect them t- to grow. There's, whether people go back to work or not, or whether the lockdown uh, is lifted or not, we could agree that there's going to be more people working for home from home. So I do expect this uh, company to grow be honest with you slack technology so uh we identify it as a strong buy last week it's still looking good uh and there it is let me let me see uh if the one month projections are still strong i think they're reporting earnings at the end of the month too yeah looking strong strong buy and then we got the one month strong buy now i I got a short contract i think that expires this week so hopefully you can make some movements this week so that I can um, take some profits. Let's continue going down our uh, watch list. So Shopify, listen, these uh, e-commerce type businesses, Work, Shopify, Fiverr, we talked about them last week. They're smashing. Fiverr's up 15% right now. Uh, you got Shopify up 6%. Uh, work. Stellar's up as well for you guys that like uh, Ripple. For the Ripple guys. Adam, you may want to look into Stellar. Ripple's little cousin. Uh, Rafterman's putting inflation of fiat into hard currency. There you go. EOS is up 3%. Amazon is moving. Yelp is back up after laying off a bunch of people. Uh, Baba's technicals are still looking strong. Link is up, but the gainer of today is Fiverr. Fiverr and Stellar. Stellar's looking strong. Let's look at this GLD uh, ETF that we were looking at. Uh, well, this is a gold trust, excuse me. We identified this as another uh, buy. Strong buy. Yeah, gold. Yeah, we we identified this last week. Let me see if I can pull up that the whole list so you guys can see the list that I'm referring to. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. So this is uh, our strong buys on TradingView uh, via their technical analysis. This is... According to Trading View, not my. I'm not giving you, telling you guys what to do. Uh, work we just showed you, which is a Slack. They are uh, moving pretty well. Walmart is looking strong for a blue chipper. Guild, and I said this this morning. Look at the pharmaceuticals, guys. Uh, there's going to be pharmaceuticals that may gain a lot. So keep your eyes open. Guild uh, was the one that really boomed on Friday. Fiverr, I said watch for Fiverr, and Fiverr is the number one gainer today. Shop. I said, watch for Shopify. They're up how much today? 5%? 6.57. Uh, watch for Baba Alibaba. TLT, this is down. This is the 20 plus year treasury bonds. And we've seen bonds in the red uh, today. Where's my TLT? Although TLT is slightly in the green today. Is it still reading strong buy on the technicals? Look at these, these TLTs. People want some... Uh, stability here technicals for a month are still reading by although the oscillators are not completely favorable seo this this has been i'm telling you guys this thing has been on our list and it's another one that's gaining like a maniac so this thing must be shorting uh, shorting crude someone said it moves at 3x of crude but i think it's shorting crude minus 2x that's what i'm thinking This thing is booming. Strong buy there on moving averages. Let's look at the one month projections. Looking buy, buy as well. 
gold we just check out amazon uh united healthcare was looking like a strong buy as well let's look at if they're still holding up or if we got to move them off our list and guys if you want me to add anything on this list the, this list specifically has to be strong buys not something like oh it looks good no it has to be like the technicals are smashing you know i want undeniable technicals here where's my unh united healthcare are they st still smashing with the techs They're down in the red today. And their technicals are still reading buy. Strong buy. You know, you this may be this may be a buy today, actually. You know, you buy it when it's red, right? Because the technicals still, even for a day, are looking strong. J and J, Johnson and Johnson, Procter and Gamble. Let's look at those. These are blue chips, man. These are blue chippers. Let's look at Procter & Gamble real quick. Procter & Gamble's up as well. About to touch all-time highs. Strong buy. And where's my J&J? &J? So it seems like the list is about the same as it was last week and again we're going by this list that we have strong buys on trading view according to their technical analysis for one day up to one month uh, so we'll go down down the list again work walmart guild which is the pharmaceutical company fiverr shopify alibaba tlt's 20 plus year treasury bonds seo is bloomberg short crude oil uh gold gld for the trust amazon united healthcare johnson and johnson procter and gamble and uh, we still got to look at Chainlink and ETH, but I would assume that they're still bullish. Let's look at uh, at ETH and see if the, the ETH numbers are still looking strong. ETH is up against Bitcoin. Shout out to everybody trying to join this 32 ETH club. ETH is still looking strong. It's one of, I think it's the crypto that I'm most bullish on right now. One day is looking good and one month is still looking like a sell. So easy tiger, easy tiger. On the one week, it's still looking good, but on the one month, it's still looking sell, like sell. That's why I got it at the bottom of the list here. Because these other buys appear stronger considering their technical analysis. Let's look at Link one more time here, or let's look at Link for today. And Link is close to all-time highs as well you got your technicals reading buy for the day let's look at how they look they look more they look more favorable than eth's technicals so i'm gonna have to uh downgrade eth upgrade chain link shout out to my chain linkers and i know you there's a, some some of you guys have been like champ get that eth but don't forget that uh that chain link don't forget the chain link no so yeah no eth link was already above eth so yeah so keep it like that Let's keep it like that. So there it is, guys. I'm going to keep you up to date. There it is. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and check out my Robin Hood today and see how I'm doing. I'm, I'm down a little bit, but I've been learning. So it's all good. See if I make a play. If not, uh, I'll keep you up to date. Drop a comment before I land this uh, plane, guys. Let me know if you read me loud and clear. You see the COVID stats looking like they're flattening out here. How about deaths looks like it's flattening out as well. This is wild that they had these stats here. But um, I guess someone has to pay attention to them. Especially now that people uh, want to start opening up the states. I think they have to. Um, it's been recommended that they move into different phases according to their statistic, their COVID statistics, their two week stats. So we go S&P slightly in the red. Uh, I would I would say this. So I'm bearish for the short term right now. I'll be honest with you. Why? Because S&P is really not moving right now. OK, we got crude oil getting obliterated like we've never seen before. We're back to 1990s prices on the oil and we're getting smashed on the bonds as well. The 10 years at 0.64, it's down uh, 0.2. 
So if, you know, for the short term, this is red, red, red. I would expect S&P and Dow to be red if the if they don't get a handle on crude or the bonds. Rafterman says, do you see the problem with the stages? Yeah, they don't have any expiration dates. They're for like, it's like forever. More pink coming before universal basic income rollout. Yeah, I mean, if, if you know, there's going to have to be more pain if they want to roll a UBI, UBI out. Um, and, you know, listen, I, I think that that ultimately that's where, where things are going to be going, whether people are, are liberal or conservative. You got the conservatives throwing out money now. I'm against UBI, to be honest with you, but it looks like that's what's going to happen, you know. Rafterman says we will always be under the thumb of Big Brother. Yeah, you know that's, that kind of sucks. Yeah, but don't get it confused, guys. Yeah, you uh, you know a socialist uh, agenda, top down uh, authoritarian government. It's it's basically the plan, whether it's left or right. It's like. James says, "What will be interested? Uh, will be interesting to see what bounces back the quickest: Bitcoin, oil, stocks, etc." Well, I mean, what bounced back the quickest after the March crash was stocks. Stocks bounce back quicker than Bitcoin. Adam says, uh, "No doubt that is what ha- happening. Happening? Yeah, I think so. I think so. What we're seeing is like you know a complete takeover, right?" Yeah, we're, we're going to roll into a new system. Uh, eventually, there'll be a digital coin and there's going to be, you know, immunity certifications, uh, bio passports or, you know, I, they're, they're going for, you know, they're going for everything. Now, how fast does that happen or not? And if there's going to be any, you know, if their plan will get backed up or not, we don't know. But uh, we're dealing with what we have in front of us. All right, guys, I think I've been on for uh, more than I expected. So stay strong. Um, let me check D-Live, though. Let me check D-Live real quick. Let me check D-Live real quick. Shout out anybody that may have thrown me some lemons over there on D-Live. No, Okay. But we have uh, Burt Canton just followed, so shout out to you. I um, usually do a redistribution, but um, it seems like Zilla was the only person that uh, showed up today on DLive. But it's all good. We had over 20 people show up on YouTube, so all good. Uh, Rafterman said, I'm not sure Don is even in charge anymore. We are under martial law. I'm, I'm not sure he was ever in charge there, Rafterman. I mean, he definitely had uh, a little bit more uh, freedom than some of the other puppets. But... Um, you know, I, I question them all. Cryptozilla says not needed every time. Yeah, if there's there's not, you know, there's only, you're, I think you're the only guy on, on DLive right now. So, you know, when we have a few people, we'll do the lemon redistribution. So that's what it is, guys. Let's keep our eyes focused on the uh, price of crude. Let's see what happens. It's a bloodbath out there. I don't think anybody can, uh, other than Adam that chimed in, and I know we disagree, and it's all good, Adam. You know, I could disagree, and, you know, we could poke at each other. It's all good. I welcome everybody's uh, thoughts and opinions. I don't have to agree with them, though, but I I welcome them, you know, like, keep posting. It's all all good, you know. Um, I would keep an eye on crude oil. Other than Adam, no one else chimed in, though. What do you guys think? I mean, is it time to DCA into uh, crude oil? I mean, you're down 40% out here. I mean, in the past 24, is it time to start buying crude? Even if it drops more, is it time to start DCAing into crude? I mean, I would say kind of yes, you know? Much love, yo. Yeah, much love to you, Adam. That's all good. I'm not a ripple believer, but whatever. I mean, like, you know, I want you to win. Uh, Cryptozilla says the last dollar vigilante video was very interesting. I I, I kind of like his channel. I've, I've I've been following it for a while. I come you know I come and I go to it. I just um, 
I want more solutions and I want more plays. The spell was cast at the 2012 Olympics in London. I think the spell was cast a long time before that, though. They may have cast spells, though. Rafterman said crude may be the play. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it does crude look like a deal and a steal out here, guys? Come on, guys. I mean, should I just throw, I mean, like, at $10 a barrel, should you just throw a couple hundred bucks on it and just throw a Hail Mary? If you lose it all, you lose it all? I mean, I don't know. This thing may come back with a roar, even if it goes back to 30 bucks, which is still cheap. I don't know. Just let me know if crude is the play. Is crude a play or not? Because it seems like, how low could you go from here? I mean... Down 43 in a day. Like, look, even if you bought in at 10 today and it still bleeds out to eight, are you feeling that bad? I mean, I don't know. The last dollar vigilante video was interesting, aka the spell was cast at the 2012 Olympics in London. You see that reply now and you feel ill. He covers the guys around Don Donnie. Are you talking about uh, the dollar vigilante? I'm, I'm, I'm not following you here. Um, Carlos says, what up, champ? What's up? How you doing, Carlos? Nice to uh, see you back. Rafterman says, I say go for the crew trade. I know. That's what I'm saying. Is this like a no-brainer here with the crew trade right here, guys? I mean, yeah, the knife may be falling, but how far could this knife fall? It's not, I mean, I, I, what are they going to do? $5 barrels? I don't know. And if that, even if it goes to $5 barrels, how long could that be sustainable? Carlos says, you got me thinking of selling some Ripple and buying some crude. Listen, let me be honest with you guys. I don't have any experience with crude. I don't know anything about that. But I mean, just knowing how markets move and stuff and like crude is a big deal, guys. Like, you're, you know, the crude oil industry is way bigger than Bitcoin. Because you're not only talking about gas and power, you're talking about plastics and stuff. Adam says Saudi Arabia said they can go to seven. Right, like, okay, so like, let's say they go to seven and you got some at 10, you got some at eight, you got some at seven, and then it goes to 15. Okay, I, I you know, I don't know. Link to Gates and Soros, uh, Dollar Vigilante video has a lot of things in it. I'll check it out. Thanks for letting me know. I don't know. It just seems to me like, you know, you're supposed to buy low, sell high. I mean, this looks like a good deal. I don't know. Even if oil is not, it does never rebounds to where it once was. I would only, I could expect it to go up from here though. I don't know. I think to me, it's like oil seems like the, the deal of the day. I'll keep you guys posted. On that note, I'm out of here, guys. I've been on for like an hour and 25 minutes, so I'm going to get to uh, I'm gonna have some lunch or whatnot. But yeah, shout out to Adam, CryptoZilla, Carlos, and the rest of the crypto maniacs out there. Uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow if I'm not back today. Thank you for the meme, CryptoZilla. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay strong out there. It's The Voice, Champagne Crypto. Thanks for tuning in.